So, Noel Plum, as is his wont, has asked an interesting question. And let me show you. Right, so I'll just give you the question. Um, this is especially aimed at moral objectivists, religious moral objectivists, but anybody can have a bit of a think about this. I've certainly been giving it some thought the last few days. Okay, so this is this is how it goes, okay? Um, God, this perfect entity, has given us this moral code. But how do we know that the moral code, this is what we're being told, how do we know that this moral code is a perfect moral code? Couldn't God have given us an imperfect moral code? So people... Good question, as I, as I already said. It's a good question. And of course, in order to answer it, without being dismissive, because obviously in order to answer this, you need to allow yourself to be carried down the garden path a good bit. You, I first of all have to accept a context in which I'm going to answer this question, in which there is such a thing as this perfect being called God which is an absurdity in its own right, but I'm going to go there for a bit. And then the question is, given this perfect being uh, that creates a moral law, couldn't the moral law itself be imperfect? And the answer to that is, not only can it be imperfect, it has got to be imperfect no matter what. Because if there's one thing we can all agree on is that we are imperfect. We human beings are imperfect. So regardless of where the moral code is coming from, the problem is that it has to be communicated by us, human imperfect human beings. And not only that, it has to be communicated through our imperfect human language, which is fraught with ambiguities, vagueness, things aren't clear, things can easily be misunderstood as one human being speaks to another. Languages are never definitive. Languages can never be crystal clear. So now let's look at this supposed moral code that this supposedly perfect being has given us. And it doesn't really matter which particular moral code handed down by a so-called God we're actually talking about. It could be the Christian moral code, the Jewish moral code, the Islamic moral code. It all boils down to the same thing. These are things that were written down hundreds, if not thousands of years ago in languages that nobody reading the texts today actually natively speaks anymore. So let's just investigate, let's just explore the number of filters all these so-called moral codes must have gone through before they reach you, the reader. First of all, there is the filter of the comprehension of the first person, the person to whom this moral code was revealed by this God thing. For example, Christ or Mohammed or anybody like that. Whatever perfect moral code God communicated to them had to pass through their comprehension filter. They are human beings. They are fallible. They can't completely grasp a perfect moral code. And now it's in that person's head. Mohammed or Christ or whoever else. Now they have to communicate it to the people around them in whatever their native language is. That is another filter through which this has to pass. This is an internal level of comprehension that needs to be going through a communication filter for it to leave your mouth as you're speaking it, as you're trying to communicate it. So by the time the sound left 
Christ's or Mohammed's lips, it had already gone through two imperfect filters. Now it has to go through the same filters again as it's falling on the ears of all those who are listening to it and who are trying to internalize it and who are trying to pass on the message. Now, even in the best case scenario, the message was written down straight away, but quite often it's going through numbers of different filters. People who are passing the message on verbally before it is actually written down formally and made part of a so-called holy book in which it is then set in well, stone or written on paper or at least it is now a finalized text that you are supposed to follow. But even then we are now looking at texts that are written in archaic original languages. Even the original Arabic in which the Quran was written is an archaic form of Arabic which is not the same as modern Arabic. So no modern Arabic speaker actually has a complete grasp of the language that's written in the Quran. And then of course the same is even worse for the language in which the Bible and the Torah and other Christian books were written because they were written in languages that are well and truly dead such as Aramaic and ancient Greek. So all these original texts now need to be filtered through a comprehension gas gap of somebody who is considered to be an expert on the ancient world in which the original people who wrote the text lived. They need to be experts in the language, but of course there is no way on earth that any of these people can perfectly comprehend the text in its original form, because even they have to take the original text, make the best of it they can in their own minds, and then translate it into whatever language they're going to communicate it to you with. And again, unless you are an Arab and a Muslim, then your first language is not going to be Arabic, so it's going to have to pass through your translation filters. It's going to have to pass through your comprehension filter. And now the moral code that was handed down such a long time ago by this supposedly perfect God of yours is finally, has finally arrived inside your head. It's like a game of Chinese whispers. No matter how perfect the origin of such a moral code may have been, what you have made of it can never be perfect. And that might be a sobering thought, especially for the odd fundamentalist who might end up watching this video.